want to welcome everybody to the um, summer seminar on behalf of our illustrious district governor James Arbuckle Sr. A, he will uh, speak to everybody later on, but right now I wanted to say thank you for being here. I am the uh, district trainer. My name is Brian Riga. I am a uh, proud member of the uh, Rotary Club of Jonesboro, where I don't know about you, but it's hot up here. So um, we are we are going to we are going to move right into the membership uh, general session. I always like to start our meetings and like that with the uh, vision of Rotary. Together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. So that's kind of important to keep in the back of your mind with everything that we do. It's kind of cool. For the next 20 minutes, we'll be talking membership and club growth. We have our district membership chair, Matt Bowie, and PDG Nancy Linhart, who are going to uh, take the lead on this. And Matt, I've got your slides. The floor is yours, my friend. Brian, thank you so much. And I've got my 20-minute uh, timer ticking down right now. So we'll, uh, we'll do, uh, uh, try to keep uh, things on, on task here. So thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. I see 97 people here tonight, Brian. That's a, that is a great, great participation. First and foremost, thank you, uh, uh, James, for the opportunity to, to uh, serve the district. It's, uh, it's a great honor. And, and Brian, glad to work with you. And of course, Nancy, uh, as always, it's a pleasure to work with you. On the district membership club, or excuse me, team, and, and I didn't put this on a slide, everyone, just a quick introduction. Uh, you've got myself uh, and, and also Kenny Gibbs with the Little Rock Rotary and uh, 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 um, where is Charles? Charles is with the, uh, with the Little Rock Metro Club. And I don't know if they're here this evening or not. I see, oh, there's Charles. Charles Harris with the membership, with the, uh, the, the Metro Club is here as well. So. Glad to have uh, those two guys and uh, excited to work with them for the coming year. As uh, Brian mentioned, I am the, uh, or maybe he didn't mention, I'm the immediate past president for the Little Rock After Hours Club, one of the district's newest members, newest uh, clubs in the uh, district, and uh, very excited to be a part of that very unique and dynamic club. And now excited to kind of uh, take the next step in, in, in talking about membership. So uh, what I, I'd like to start by asking a rhetorical question, and I know everybody's on mute. Uh, so the, the question is, without members, what is Rotary? Members are the key. Without members, without a constantly growing membership and uh, um, engaged membership, Rotary would not, would not be the force that it is today. You guys all know, you've been in Rotary long enough to know that the, the, the impact of Rotary worldwide over the last 100 years is incredible. So one of the uh, big things that we're uh, looking forward to uh, this year as a membership committee is we are looking to work with each of your clubs individually to, to help, to help uh, uh, talk about attracting new members. And then of course, engaging new members. And one of the things that, that I would love to talk with your individual clubs uh, at some point in the future is talking about all the wonderful membership resources that we have available at our fingertips. There are tons of things that are out there that you uh, as an individual club can dive into and really use to fine tune your membership plan for your own club. Uh, I do want to start by saying, or, or continue saying, uh, that the goal this year from our president, uh, Shekhar Mehta, is to grow from 1.2 to 1.3 million members. If you've been around Rotary long enough, you know that we've kind of been stuck on that 1.2 million member mark on your way. a minute now. So we're looking to grow from 1.2 to 1.3. And guys, you know what? Coming off the year that we had last year with the, the international pandemic, we can do this. And we can make a difference here in our own district, here in Arkansas it is possible to see very positive growth. Now, that said, let's get started with the, the, the presentation here that Brian's uh, gratefully, graciously got uh, uh, embedded in his overall deck here. You can see right here, declining membership. Over the past year, uh, you know, we started with, with almost 1,800 members. 
by by year end, you know, we were down to close to 1600 and that's a, that's about a 9% drop, but it, everybody knows we had a very, very, very hard year. We, we all had to, to change the way we did things. You know, March 13th, I believe is that infamous day that I can recall for me that, that, that Friday the 13th, that's when our world changed right there. And we all had to go virtual and that didn't work for a lot of our, our members. So it was tough. It was tough to stay engaged. It was definitely tough to attract new members. However, there is, and that last point right there, opportunity, opportunity to reverse this trend exists now. It exists now. So on the next uh, slide, it's really kind of part two of declining membership. I wanna focus on this number, minus 307, minus 307. We lost 307 uh, 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 members last year. And, and, and that's not a good thing. We gained 145, which is wonderful, but we lost 307. The key to understanding declining membership, right there, you can see it in front of uh, your eyeballs. Why are you leaving? We've got to find out from our members why we're leaving. Knowing why members are leaving is only going to help us as a district and your individual clubs as well for combating these losses. Now, the question gets into next is, how can you help? How can you get started? And really, this is a very uh, abbreviated uh, presentation that I'd love to be able to give to your clubs if, if you'd like to have more information. On the next slide, very high level information, membership planning. Guys, this, this is uh, in, in some ways basic blocking and tackling, but, but it's also uh, difficult as you guys know. You know, whether you're the, the smallest club in the district or you're the largest club in the district, you know that attracting new members is difficult, especially when you're not the only uh, local civic group and uh, game in town. So attraction strategies are incredibly uh, um, uh, beneficial to bringing in new members. You know, promoting your club, you've got to figure out how to best improve your club experience. You know, when, when you get members in there, let's let's have some membership goals. What are you going to ask your members to do once they become a member of the club? What are your your key service projects that are going to uh, attract new members to your club to get them engaged in Rotary and locally? And then, you know, being able to promote your signature events. And, and, and one of the, the, the breakout sessions is all about uh, branding and promotion. So I'm very excited about that. Club health. What? Only you guys can answer this for your own club. What's, what's your overall club experience look like? You know, are you having enough service activities and social events? Uh, what, what, is your, what is your local club's uh, image uh, uh, around your, your town? What's, what's the perception of your club around town? And, and, and then look at your operations. Are there things that can, you can do to improve your operations, your image around town, that's affecting your club health. And that's that's what I'm kind of uh, speaking about right there, club visioning. And I realize I'm going through this very, very quickly. So please do forgive me. I know I'm trying to cover a lot of ground here and we're gonna hear from some folks here in just a few minutes are gonna really provide some wonderful information. Club visioning is uh, something that um, past uh, Governor uh, uh, Nancy has really been a big proponent of. She took our after hours club through that uh, a couple of years ago, and it was very, very helpful for our club. And I know that Charles is the advocate for uh, uh, visioning this year. So please do reach out to Charles. Charles has got wonderful uh, uh, information to share on club visioning. And then the last couple of the points there, flexibility, innovation, and member orientation, flexibility and innovation. Guys, if there's one thing I wanna say to you right now, it is okay to change. A lot of people don't like change. I understand that. I, I can certainly be rooted in it myself. But when we're thinking about how to change our clubs and to attract new members, and Nancy's going to talk about engagement here in a moment, it's okay to change. If you're doing something today and your membership has been stagnant for a period of time, consider changing something. Look, get your leadership together. Get your board together. Figure out what little tweaks you can make here and there and look at how that's going to impact your membership. I can almost assure you that making positive little changes like that is going to have a big impact on your club. Membership orientation. Uh, if you don't have a membership orientation program right now, please do consider putting one together. Again, I know uh, um, Nancy Nancy is our, our superwoman. She does all kinds of wonderful things, but uh, she's got a, a membership orientation that she has used in the past. 
which really helps people understand more about Rotary. What is Rotary? What do we, we stand for? How do we continue to improve ourselves? What are we going to do in not only local communities, but also across the world? Brian, on the, uh, the next slide is really kind of where we're going to start to hear from a couple of folks. And, and uh, I hear that uh, 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 Tina and Michelle are, are prepped and ready to go. We're going to hear from Tina Moore, who's the immediate past president of Cleveland County Club. Then we're going to hear from Michelle Oglesby, again, immediate past president of the Sherwood Club. Both have a, a, a few minutes to kind of talk about some of the wonderful things that they've done to improve their membership. These are some of the top, these are the, one of the top two clubs or the top two clubs in our district in terms of uh, adding membership last year. So Tina, let's, uh, let's hear from you first. And then when you're done, if you would please pass it over to uh, Michelle. Yes, sure. Hello everyone. So um, I was kind of thinking of what I wanted to say. Um, Prior to me becoming president, I actually had some things in my mind and I was really intrigued with how the West Little Rock um, Club was only meeting twice a month. So I had actually approached pre-COVID, pre-even knowing that COVID was getting ready to happen, I had approached my club in January of 2020 and kind of just threw some things out there of, hey, we need to change. It's time to look at some things different. And one of the things I had proposed was less meetings, more community service. Um, one of our challenges was where we met was not willing to work with us. They wanted us there weekly. They wanted to charge us a certain amount for food. So I, I can honestly say that the, the, a positive thing of the, the pandemic and being shut down, we had no idea in January that by Feb late February all the way to June, we would not be meeting at all. But when it was time to meet again, um, our meeting spot, which is also an eating place, which is the Red Apple in, um, in Heber Springs, a lot of history there of why we meet there. It's gone back for many, many years. And we really honestly wanted to keep the location but because they did want us to come back, they were willing to now renegotiate how they charged us for the food. Because one of my, what I saw is that people were not staying in our club because A, it was a lot of time commitment and B, the food was too expensive because people were getting charged for food whether they attended or not because we were getting charged for food whether they attended or not. So I was able to go back and rene renegotiate that with the Red Apple. Um, they said, as long as we had 10 people that ordered $100 worth of food per meeting, that they would um, let us pay as we go. So that was a huge factor uh, for us of how we grew. Uh, but I had a vision before you know, the pandemic happened that we were gonna be in the community more, we were gonna meet less. And so um, I said, I think that helped because I already had it here. And it already started planting seeds with the club. And at first I had a little, like you said, change is hard. Um, at first I had a little pushback, but after not meeting for three months and we tried the Zoom thing and my, my club just was not on board. Uh, it was, you know, we had technical difficulties and people are Zoomed out with their jobs. And so I think after not meeting for three months, we were just so ready to be together again. They were, you know, yes, let's do it. Let's try it. Um, and what we found, what it was, it was a good thing. Like, I can't imagine that we'd ever go back to four meetings a month and trying to find speakers and things like that. Um, we love it. Um, we got in the community more. We were able to do more community service. We wore our t-shirts every time we served. We promoted that on Facebook and we had people just kind of, hey, how do I be a part of that? Um, then we, that, that membership challenge came out and we were low on funds um, in our general fund. And so we wanted it. We wanted it bad. And if you put a challenge like that in front of Renee Kelly, she's going to go for it. You know, so Renee um, and Tim, our current president, they both recruited some people. I had recruited a few people along the way. So it just really helped us grow. And I mean, I think we're now we're closer than we've ever been at the club we're stronger and we just really like each other, which helps too. And we've really just created a lot of bonds. So not a lot of good things out of COVID, but there are, you know, some, and for our club, it was a good thing. So I'm, I'm done, Michelle, it's on you. Hey guys, well, um, 
What we did, we, we definitely uh, went to Zoom. Uh, we didn't stop, we kept on going. I have 12 members on here representing Sherwood. Woo -woo -woo -woo. Gotta make it fun. So what we did was <clears throat> we invited people to our Zoom meeting. We had good turnout. And um, even when we did our, our projects, our service activities, we always pass out our brochures. So that helps. And then we all got cards. So whenever we are out, we can give out cards. Of course, you got to have your bling bling on. So we got seven members that way. And those numbers are incorrect because we we went from 43 to 66 because not only did we invite people, we also started a Pet Lovers Club because Nancy challenged us to start a satellite club in 90 days. But Sherwood, Arkansas, we started the satellite club in 63 days with 14 members. So that's how we grew because we knew that a lot of people do not like to get up early in the morning because we are early team. We get up at uh, five o'clock, six o'clock, so we can be at a seven o'clock meeting. So with the Pet Lovers Club, we meet in the evening time. So that gives a little bit of versatility, flexibility. And we meet at six o'clock every other Tuesday. We had a pet parade. We had over 24 dogs, including three that was from the animal shelter. And three of those dogs were adopted. So um, asking people, being out there, having fun. That's what we are all about. That's how you get members. Bam, sure would, out. Michelle, thank you very much. Uh, Tina, thank you very much as well. What wonderful ideas, guys. These are just a couple of examples of some of the things that you can do. Very quickly, uh, look at these uh, uh, wonderful pictures here. 34 new members so far this year. We're only going to continue to grow only going to continue to grow this year. Put that in your mind. You will have new members coming up. We're gonna have a segment next talking about membership engagement, turning it over to Nancy for a few words about engagement. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, good evening, everyone. <laughs> How you have new members now, as, as Matt just showed, 34 new members so far. Actually, I read this morning, I looked at the numbers this morning, we're up to 36. We have new members. How do we keep them engaged? Rotary, they joined for a reason. They have a purpose. It is their club as well. So we need to impress upon them that it's their club. Ask them why they joined. Do a survey um, or um, through the orientation process, find out what they're passionate about. Rotary has seven areas of focus. See where they fit in. If you don't have that area of focus yet, particularly the environment one, because that's brand new, ask them if they would like to lead that, if they would like to start some initiatives around that focus area or whatever focus area they want to engage in. Going back to the membership um, orientation, so vital. Um, when uh, a couple years ago, Brian used to do one up in the um, northern part of the state. I did one for the central Arkansas part of the state. I'd be more than happy to share with anybody the orientation slide deck that I put together. It covers Rotary's history, why, you know, structure, and then talks about uh, my club. In fact, I'm doing the orientation for my new members tomorrow. Be more than happy to share it. So just if you want it, let me know. Just replace West Little Rock Rotary with your Rotary Club name. But an orientation is vital so they understand what's going on. What does happy bucks mean? You know, what does Paul Harris Fellow mean? You know, imagine being a new member and walking in and not understanding any of that. That's a way to not feel a part of something if you don't understand what's going on. So that's why a, a um, orientation is so important. Fellowships and action groups. If somebody has an interest of Rotary outside of the club, those two opportunities are fabulous. Matt is um, the chairman of the BREW, here's that acronym again, the Central Arkansas chapter of BREW, which is Beer Rotarians Enjoy Worldwide. Great organization, all the Central Arkansas clubs have been represented at these monthly meetings. I am the vice president of BELRAG, another acronym, Basic Education and Literacy Rotarian Action Group. Every month, at my board meetings, I sit in and have developed friendships 
and a whole lot of fun with people from Uganda, Australia, Canada, Philippines, India, Massachusetts. We have a blast together before we get down to business. My Rotary World expands every month because of that. Those are great ways to engage people who want an experience outside of just the club. Um, let's see, mentorship program, very important as well. And when you're um, pairing up a new member with a uh, mentor, don't make it the uh, person who sponsored them. Find somebody else in the club who's willing to um, engage that person, who will follow up with them, will reach out to them. Will, when a service project is coming up, call them up and say, hey, would you join me at the service project? Kenny Gibbs always talks about when he brings new members to his club, he calls them up and says, hey, can I pick you up? And brings them to the meeting. That's what a mentor should be doing. Somebody who is really helping them through their first six months, their first year in the club, engaging them in ways um, so that they can find their purpose. And let's see what other, I'm, I know I'm talking fast, but we're gonna run out of time here. So I think that was all I covered there. So any questions you have about any of that, please reach out to me. Nancy, thank you so much. Just a couple of quick uh, parting words here. Guys, this is our theme. Look, look, please, if you don't, if you don't hear anything else, look at this right here. This is going to be incredibly helpful for everybody. Each one bring one. Each one bring one. What does that mean? Each one of us as members to Rotary can bring a guest to a Rotary meeting. If we expose new people, they will come to Rotary. You just know that they will because we're all here. We love what Rotary stands for. We love our clubs and what our clubs do for us and what we can do for our individual communities and the world. Each one bring one. Please pass along this note to all of your members. Send out an email with this logo. If you need this logo, reach out to myself, anybody here. Uh, uh, and Sydney, I didn't say hello to you a moment ago. My apologies. Sydney's got this logo. There are plenty. Brian's got it. Please send this out. Encourage your members to invite others. Like Nancy was just saying, guys, I'm so sorry that I was talking so quickly. We've all covered very much ground here. I would love and uh, to to speak with your clubs uh, about membership uh, more in depth with with a little bit more time. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about membership, please do reach out. You've got my email right there on the screen. That's my cell phone. Of course, you can find me in DACDB. I'd love to talk with your clubs, whether you're in person or via Zoom. Please let me know. Brian, thank you for the time. I think we went over about a minute and a half. I'm so sorry. And, and one thing I want to add quickly, Brian, since you haven't unmuted, if your club is doing something differently to engage members, please put that in the chat so that others could see it. We'd love to hear your ideas, what you're doing to engage your members. That's the purpose of this seminar is to share ideas. So please do that. Thank you both so much for uh putting the program together and giving us a keynote that we all needed to hear. And uh, we do appreciate that so much.